On today's episode of Sci-Fi Factions Compared, we look at the ground forces of the Star Wars, Halo, Warhammer, and StarCraft universes. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sci-Fi Factions Compared. You guys have been asking for this episode for some time now. So when I took a look today at the Eckhart Slatter Discord and I saw this recommendation from Talender, I thought might as well get it done. So today we'll be comparing and ranking the ground forces of the Terran Dominion, the UNSC, the Republic Clone Army, and the Imperial Guard. To take into account the different power levels of the universes here, we're not looking at overall strength, but rather which army is best from a logical and organizational point of view. This is fairly similar to my previous Best Armies video where I looked at Star Wars factions only. Let's start first with a look at the UNSC. During the Human Covenant War, UNSC ground forces were one of humanity's most important assets. Although most space battles resulted in losses and casualties, the UNSC almost always had a fighting chance on the ground. Although technically, a good portion of UNSC ground forces were a part of the Navy rather than the Army, we'll include naval assets for this comparison, because we don't really know a whole lot about the Army itself. UNSC forces were typically very mobile and effective, the result of having to fight a total war against an interstellar empire. Although planets often use local army brigades defensively, the main offensive tool for the UNSC was the Marine. UNSC Marines were combat hardened, highly trained, and well equipped. They were often used in units which could adapt to different combat scenarios with long range, short range, demolition, and other expert units readily available. Supplementing standard marines were UNSC Special Forces, the most common of which was the Orbital Drop Shock Trooper, the ODST. Also part of the larger Marine Corps, ODSTs specialized in rapid deployment and response, with ODST combat teams typically heavily specialized in specific mission objectives. Alongside that, there was arguably the most important but certainly rarest branch of the UNST ground forces, the Spartans. The two main Spartan programs active during the Human Covenant War were the Spartan twos and threes. Spartan twos were abducted from birth, heavily indoctrinated and augmented, and given the best power armor available, increasing their strength, skill, reflexes, and speed. Spartan threes were typically less augmented than Spartan twos and were seen as more disposable, with only some receiving top of the line armor. A single Spartan two could easily change the tide of an entire battle, as could select Spartan threes. They were however incredibly difficult to replace and extremely limited in numbers, especially when talking about Spartan twos. Assisting UNSC troops was a variety of vehicles. The UNSC relied very heavily on armor and had a variety of tanks, walkers, scout vehicles, etc. The UNSC heavily favors practicality in design rather than flashiness. This effectiveness allowed them to compete with the much more highly advanced Covenant on the ground. Next up we have the Republic Clone Army. The Grand Army of the Republic as it existed during the Clone Wars was an incredible fighting force. The Grand Army of the Republic was incredibly specialized, from the differing roles within low-level infantry all the way up to spec forces like the ARC Trooper or the Clone Commandos, the Clone Army was not at all a blunt weapon, especially when complemented by Jedi forces. The mechanized portions of the Republic Army were also very intelligently designed, especially when compared with the Empire. The ATTE was incredibly practical when compared with the later ATAT, possessing extra sturdiness, more varied weapons, and a lower profile. Republic combat walkers also had less of a focus on troop transport with the Republic instead using dedicated walkers for that purpose. Minor design issues notwithstanding, I also think the A6 Juggernaut is a fantastic vehicle capable of not only assaulting enemy positions directly, but also acting as a frontline command post. The sheer variety of Republic vehicles is also impressive. For example, when talking about two-legged walkers, the Republic has the AT-RT for a scout vehicle, the AT-AP for long-range artillery and for frontline assault, and various other walkers. In addition, they have several types of dedicated artillery, which is not something commonly seen in the Star Wars universe. My point is that the Republic is incredibly specialized and versatile when talking both about troops 
and support vehicles. This is likely due to the fact that the Clone Wars were galaxy spanning and had a heavy emphasis on ground combat. Training from birth also made the standard clone troopers stand out when compared to their adversaries. Clones were literally not only bred for combat, but bred for a specific role. Snipers would work on sniping for their entire life. Arc troopers and clone commandos would receive specialized training. The clone army is unique in that it had a lot of time to grow and that it was grown very precisely. Clones were also of course led by Jedi, but I don't think they can fairly be considered part of the Grand Army of the Republic, so I won't talk about them for this video. Next up we have the Imperial Guard. 40k is sort of a weird universe here. The military arms of the Imperium are so numerous and convoluted that, as suggested by the original prompt, I'm going to focus here on the Imperial Guard specifically, rather than all ground forces used by the Imperium. That means that the Adeptus Astartes, for example, will not be included. The Astra Militarium or the Imperial Guard are the primary fighting force of the Imperium of Man in the Warhammer 40k universe, with millions of active regiments and many trillions of soldiers. The Imperium of Man is constantly facing uncountable deadly threats, and the Astra Militarium is one of the most important fighting forces in the galaxy. The Imperial Guard is thus an extremely powerful but also blunt weapon, and if we were to compare it with any other faction here in pure power, it would likely wipe them out without even noticing. Like UNSC Marines, Imperial Guardsmen serve as the bulk fighting force for the Imperial Guard, but are typically heavily reinforced by specialized units drawn from other arms of the Imperium's military. Although surprising for the Imperium, human mutants like Ogren or Rattling are even used as specialized units within various regiments. Speaking of, regiments are one of the defining factors of the Imperial Guard. Individual guard regiments are typically tied to the home planet which first raised and created them. Thus, while there is some uniformity in armor and especially weaponry, different planetary traditions and resources can lead to vast differences in training and troop quality between regiments. The skill and approach of the generals and officers within individual regiments often varies. That being said, the primary method of fighting for the Imperial Guard is survival through attrition, though more advanced techniques are sometimes employed. Local Regiments will often work together to create balanced fighting forces. And when I say balance, I mean a balance between troops, heavy armor, and other vehicles. The Imperial Guard, however, does lack air support as that falls under the auspice of the Navy and is not always readily available. All in all, the Imperial Guard is incredibly diverse, but not exactly flexible on a macro level due to the logistical nightmare that is the 40k universe. This is why sometimes throwing troops at the enemy and using the sheer size and, dare I say, bloatedness of the Imperium's military is sometimes the best option. Finally, we have the Terrans of the StarCraft universe, and specifically the Terran Dominion Marine Army. We probably know the least about the organization of the Dominion Marines when compared with the other factions here, because StarCraft lore is generally a little bit lacking. We do know that Terran Marines made up the frontline forces for the Dominion Army. The Marines were made up largely of recruits, but also supplemented heavily by criminals or others forced into service. Training was thus somewhat inconsistent, with a heavier reliance on Marine power armor and equipment. Special Forces units were typically actually held outside of the Dominion Marine Army, often in Reaper Corps or Special Forces branches, but as I did with the UNSC, I'll include them for comparison's sake, because I think they fall under the general umbrella of Terran ground forces. Nonetheless, Marines were definitely the frontline soldiers, they were expendable, and seemingly all outfitted with similar gear. They were typically supported by heavy and light ground units like the Helion or the Siege Tank, as well as air vehicles like Banshees, Vikings, and Medivacs. Specialized Marines, like Ghosts, who operated as snipers, were not typically part of ordinary Marine units, but rather were in special forces groups. Siege Walkers, like the Thor or Odin, were among the largest ground units in the Dominion Army. Alright, with this brief description of the four factions, let's now rank them from worst to best. And again, we're looking at organization and the actual effectiveness of these armies, not which one is more powerful, because the universes of Halo and 40k, for example, are very different. 
Primarily for that reason, the Imperial Guard comes in at the number 4 spot. A lack of standardization actually hurts the Guard here. The Imperium is huge, which is a big benefit in terms of pure power, but that's not what's being looked at here. The fact that each Guard regiment can call from other aspects of the Imperium military is a benefit, but generally the Guard's organization suffers due to bloat, which I think is inevitable. Some individual Guard regiments could likely rank as the most effective armies on this list, while some were basically made up of war bodies whose only purpose was to be slaughtered. Overall, because of this discrepancy and the logistical issues associated with the 40k universe, they get the number 4 spot. Coming in at number 3 is the Terran Dominion, and this is another faction which is very powerful in its own right, but I think suffers from some logical organizational issues. First of all, the frontline troops completely lack specialization, and again, were held as heavily expendable. I think training, again, was probably a little bit lax, but I like how the Terran Dominion heavily supports its frontline troops with ground vehicles. That's not to say that the 40k universe doesn't, but I think the Dominion does so more consistently. At number 3 we have the UNSC, and I think the UNSC ground forces are actually organized fairly similarly to the Terran Dominion. The main difference, I think, is that there's more specialization and variety with the frontline troopers. The main disadvantage, I think, is a lack of specialized units when compared to the Grand Army of the Republic. Sure, Spartans and ODSTs are incredibly effective on their own, but I honestly don't think that proportionally there are enough of them. Spartans were very rare, and ODSTs were really the only other special forces division. Now, at number one, and I know I'm gonna get calls of bias here, is the Grand Army of the Republic. The Republic does everything right. Frontline troopers are trained from birth into a specialized position. They're well supported by a good variety of different vehicles, and there are many special forces branches, each of which is used often and is incredibly effective at a certain task. So that's my ranking, and if you don't understand my ranking method, here's how I'll try to explain it. I'm looking at the faction that I would use as a template to make my own army. This is ignoring differences in technology or numbers, but how would I most want to structure an army that I create? So yes, the Imperial Guard is much larger and probably more technologically advanced than the UNSC, but if we scaled the UNSC up and gave them similar technology, then I think they would be better. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know your opinion down in the comments section and let me know which video you'd like to see next. Also, I've been thinking about doing a comparison of Space Marines, if you want to see that, make sure to give this video a like. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. As always, this has been Eckhart's Letter. May the Force be with you.